Okay, well, everyone fell silent. Uh, so I guess that that's your cue to me to get things going. All right, so they're busy putting the last of the heat on the hors d'oeuvres, so we'll stick to the schedule here, and the food will be perfectly prepared by the time we're done. So uh, first off, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Al Pisano. I'm the Dean of Engineering here at UC San Diego. Uh, I haven't counted the days that I've been here, but it feels like forever, but it's some odd over a year. Uh, and I'd like to welcome you all to the first of many occasions like this that I hope to have in which we are formally welcoming 19 new professors uh, into the School of Engineering. Before I start with the formal program, uh, we have a special guest with us. Uh, uh, Suresh Subramani is the Executive Vice Chancellor for the campus, otherwise known as my boss. Uh, and since he uh, responded to the invite, I said, hey, Suresh, why don't you come on up and give a welcome and some comments? Thank you. Thank you, Al. So if you see Al walking around like this, uh, you know, you, you have to guess that I twisted his arm to say a few words here. So first of all, uh, I, I was a guy, I'm not, I'm, you should introduce me, not as the executive vice chancellor, but the guy who recruited Al Pisano. Um, <laughs> so uh, that, that was a real pleasure. So I had a chance uh, to meet a number of the new faculty at various occasions. We seem like we're going from party to party. That's, we do uh, do work around here, uh, so I hope that uh, starting next week you're, you know, uh, getting the work done. But really, it's wonderful to, to see this reception and wonderful to see the faculty. And more importantly, I'm particularly pleased, all the members of the board uh, 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 who are here to help, because it really shows the faculty the connection that we have with our own, uh, the new faculty, the connection we have with our own faculty, but all the supporters in the community who are vested in, in their success. And so it's really a collective effort that all of us are putting forward to make this happen. I was joking with Al to say, you know, I was just at a different uh, party welcoming the uh, Dean of Social Sciences, and the Chancellor was there, and he, I told him, you know, I'm going to this other party, and he said, what other party? And he, I said, well, it's the uh, School of Engineering. He said, how come I'm not invited? Tell <laughs> Al I'm mad at, at this, and he's a member of, of the uh, uh, engineering faculty, so Al's in deep trouble. He'll figure that out in, in a few minutes. But welcome again, and it's uh, delightful to be here, and I hope you, the, the best of successes, and we're really looking forward to exceptional uh, accomplishments on your part. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what Suresh is really telling you is that next year we'll have this party welcoming several new faculty and a new dean, but uh, hey, we'll just let that ride as it goes. So uh, thanks, thanks again, Suresh, for the comments, and thanks everyone for being here. Uh, let's advance a slide. That is one big phalanx, and I am uh, very, very proud that it has the breadth and the depth as well as the wonderful individuals there. This has been, I think, a record year for hiring for the Jacobs School. I think no year in, at any time has the school been able to muscle up uh, enough resources and human energy to recruit and get 19 brilliant new faculty into the school. So the first group of people I need to congratulate are the departments, because we all know the departments do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the recruiting. Uh, and so I do want to very much thank the departments and all the hard work. Oh, and by the way, we're doing it again next year, so uh, just get ready to start all over again. Uh, to the new faculty themselves, hey, I'd like to welcome all of you here. Uh, many of you uh, sat with me for a few minutes during the interview process. Uh, and in fact, uh, of the 19, 14 are actually here now, and we have a few more coming in in the next few months. They're not here yet. Um, I'm going to ask the department chairs to come up one after the other, introduce themselves and their faculty. No, you can't crow about them for 30 minutes each. Um, if you just do the math, uh, you've got to stick to about 45 seconds each one. Why is all this happening? This is happening because we are in the first year of a three-year ramp-up phase. Uh, I have uh, great expectations that we, we will be recruiting 16 faculty starting now. So hi, uh, the newbies, you're only going to be newbies for about 11 months. And then uh, there's a new set right behind you. And we're still sorting out what the year after that will be, but it's going to be a spectacular growth rate. 
Uh, the school has an aspiration uh, to get to approximately 250 faculty by 2020. We are well on our way there. Uh, when a few more show up, taking 214 up to about 217, add 16 to that, uh, and you know, you're talking close to 230 within the next year. Um, so we're in, a, we're, in a, we're in a ramp up phase. There is a huge student demand for engineering and a huge industry demand for engineering. The campus knows this, and uh, we are uh, in this growth phase to accommodate that. And the other thing uh, that I'd like to point out is the, uh, is the undergraduate to graduate faculty ratio. And the joke I told today in the courtyard was, I used to say we were 6,200 students. I blinked my eyes for 30 seconds about two weeks ago, got the new numbers, and well, actually, Al, now it's 6,833 students. Okay, uh, so the real point is that uh, aside from getting the student growth under control, we're going to ramp up the faculty, and we're going to get the student-faculty ratio down toward 20 to 1. And I think that's a sweet spot uh, compared to all our uh, comparable schools. Master's and PhD program will grow, uh, and uh, I think we're on a good track there. I will try to just spend a minute on this slide. We are not. We are not going through. We are not going through a willy-nilly expansion. This is the master plan behind it. The focus of this school is to look, think, and act as a top ten professional engineering school. We have three specific strategies that get us there: joint institutes with par partners around the campus, so that we grow in breadth; agile research centers, which develop talent from within and experiential engineering so that our students are more relevant to industry. And the two values that I sort all decisions through are these. So, you know, lots of people say, I should do this and I should do that. Well, I ask myself these two questions. Does the idea being put before me represent engineering prosecuted for the public good? And if the answer is no, I'm not doing it. And the second one is, do the changes being that I'm supposed to be considering, do they, can they lead to an exponential impact on society through entrepreneurship? And if the answer is yes, hey, I think I want to do that. So this is basically the school secret plan. I just shared it with you. And every one of the new faculty, somehow you connect into the plan in that way. I have just a minute to go, so I'll say the following. Um, seven big ventures with seven partners around the campus from arts and humanities, uh, and, uh, international relations and Pacific studies, social sciences, physical sciences, scripts, health sciences, and the Rady School. The Jacob School of Engineering is actively connecting to everyone that we can on the rest of the campus. So uh, let me leave it there. And I'm going to let, uh, so uh, let me uh, bring up uh, Geert schmidt Schonbein, who is the chair of BioE. And Geert, would you introduce, introduce yourself briefly and give us a quick introduction of the two faculty who are joining your department. Right. Thank Geert, you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Al, for, uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you in public for the tremendous energy and support that Al uh, provided to us in the last year that made these recruitments possible. So as chairs of bioengineering, I was consulting at length with my faculty, who should we recruit? And in bioengineering, I think the answer is very clear. We want to have a new generation of engineers who work on tough medical problems and do so with effective tools. And we were extremely successful. So how do I advance the next slide? The first individual I'd like to introduce to you is Dr. Stephanie Fraley. Stephanie, would you please stand up? Here we go. Okay. Uh, Stephanie got her bachelor's degree at uh, University of Tennessee in Ch Chattanooga and her PhD in 2011 in, at Johns Hopkins University. She already received some of the most amazing awards, um, like a, a very competitive Boros Welcomes Fund Award. But the most important thing I want to tell you about, what is she trying to do? Stephanie worked already on two of the toughest problems. Namely, the first one is metastasis of cancer cells. 
And she developed a uh, real engineering technique to understand that very deadly migration process in, in, a, in a very constrained and very uh, well-identified surroundings. And then afterwards, she walked, moved on to my favorite topic area, which is the deadliest there is altogether, and that's called sepsis. We're hearing every day now from the patients about Ebola that actually don't die of the virus, but they die of because of the shock and the sepsis. And Stephanie has now an entire new technology with which she is going to st get started here at UCSD to address this uh, problem at the molecular level. So I'm extremely excited about her. The second recruit uh, is uh, Prashant Mali. <laughs> We've been very, <laughs> Prashant. <laughs> Prashant, you may have noticed this, Johns Hopkins University, our arch enemy, okay, uh, in bioengineering. We were able to recruit two people from uh, Johns Hopkins University. That's a friendly competition, but this happens to be just a wonderful uh, outcome of our efforts last year. Prashant, um, is falls into the same category. He's an engineer working on cancer, one of the toughest problems. And of course, we need new ideas for that. And Prashant came up with an idea, which I give you in the technical terms, called CRISP-Cas system. I'm not going to explain to you what it is. For that, I ask you to invite him over for a seminar. But I will tell you, this is a revolutionary idea. It was uh, designated in 2016 as the great, greatest scientific breakthrough in science. So we have Prashant here at home uh, with us now. And uh, basically, it's a technology that allows him to change the properties of DNA in a real life situation. So with that, I'll get the next goes on to nanoengineering. Joe. Uh, Joe Wang. Thank you, yes. Again, thank you, Gert, and thank you all for helping us in the growth. So I'm also a new chair, only three months in the job. So we are pleased. We have four uh, new recruits. Yi Chen came from MIT. He's a native of China. Please stand. Where is it? Yi Chen. Pleasure to have you, and he got his uh, master in Fudan University in Shanghai, PhD in Purdue, working on a DNA nanomachine, and a postdoc with Bob Langer in MIT on uh, gene delivery, drug delivery. It's a pleasure to have you here. Next, uh, what we are pushing here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aaron Drew, where is Aaron? Oh, he's teaching, or my? <laughs> I saw him today, but he must be teaching. Yeah, he's. Is our new recruit. Uh, is a teaching professor from Penn State, PhD from Penn State, research on electrophoresis, but he will do a lot of science education and classroom format, so he's not here. Next, we will go to... David is not here. David will join us in July. He still do postdoc in uh, Lawrence. He's from MIT, work on advanced energy material, solar cell energy conversion, and he will join us in uh, July. And again, the last one is Jesse is here. Where is Jesse? Joker from... <laughs> uh, from so Jesse is a native of Missouri, Jesse, yeah? And a PhD from UT Austin and postdoc in uh, Stanford working on molecular imaging, a contrast agent for nanomedicine. It's a pleasure to have you here. That's all for nano. Thank you. Next, let me introduce... Chair of Mechanical Engineering. I'm a Chair of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, and I hopefully will find the proper button. Okay, I did. Very good. So I would like to put some human touch to my uh, new faculty. For example, this is a James friend who brings absolutely wonderful new aspect of research in biomedical devices. And also, he combines fundamental and applied study to use different types of fields, specifically electromagnetic, ele electromechanical fields, to guide microscopic devices into human body. I would like to add that his level of energy is such that I feel very sad every time I meet him. So I never was <laughs> in positions that I felt that I have a lack of energy, but he exactly is absolutely wonderful 
individuum from energy point of view. He is going to arrive on November 1st. He is not on the campus. So second, higher is Padmini. She is right here, Padmini. Can we see you? Oh, yes. <laughs> she brings absolutely amazing expertise combining very rigorous mathematical approach to living um, uh, cells, which is very, very difficult to do because usually language which is used in biology and language which is used in mathematics is completely different. When you are able to combine these two, you, you are up to really um, discoveries. And I would like to add, again, human touch. She is so active that my finger on the right hand is already tired to sign proposals. <laughs> Antonio Sanchez, next one. He is in energy. It's another trust area in our department. And uh, he continues uh, strengths which was created from the beginning of our departments, starting from Juan Carmen through Penner and through Foreman Williams. He works in a very uh, broad range of energy devices in clean combustion technology and aerospace propulsion and safety hazard. And finally, we have uh, Michael Tolley, who opens a new area in our department, which is related to robotics. Again, as Dean already mentioned, it is in frame of the clusters. And uh, this is related to the clusters of robotics. Very talented, wonderful new faculty. I would like to add one more thing. It's usually large numbers don't go very well with the quality. What is accomplished during this year, we combined uncombinable large number of hires and excellent quality of hires. I am Enrique Luco, and I am uh, the chair of the Department of Structural Engineering, and I am delighted to introduce to you our two new hires in our department. The first one is uh, Dr. Uh, Professor J.S. Chen, who is currently the William Prager uh, Professor of Structural Engineering. He uh, obtained his uh, PhD at, uh, uni at Northwestern University. He worked with Ted Belishko there, who unfortunately passed away just uh, last week. Uh, he's a pioneer in the development of mesh-free or particle finite element methods and the application of these methods to a b huge variety of, of cases involving nonlinear uh, nonlinearities and very large deformations. He, uh, in the very short time that he has been here, he has already uh, created a center for uh, computational methods in extreme events. Uh, he works in the application of these finite element methods to uh, blast uh, penetration bioengineering applications, uh, geomechanics applications, the, the variety of uses of this approach are just incredible. He is a member of, our, he's fellow of, our, of at least five uh, professional societies, including the American Society uh, for uh, Mechanical Engineering, the International Association for Computational Mechanics. He's a delightful colleague and already is uh, mentoring a number of our newer faculty members. So, oh, JS, uh, could you stand up? Yeah. 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 Let's see here. I can try to do it. The next, uh, John, please stand up. Yes. Our. Uh, uh, the second hire is uh, Professor John McCartney. He comes from the University of uh, Colorado at B Boulder. Uh, he specializes in problems of unsaturated soil mechanics uh, and uh, applications of heat to improve uh, soils and also in uh, geothermal uh, energy. 
uh, uh, John has received an incredible number of awards for his uh, young age, uh, including the Cross Award, Casa Grande Award, the NSF Career Award, and, and, and so on. Um, let me just go back to, to, uh, to JS and say that uh, JS came from UCLA and uh, he had been chair of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering there. All right, thank you. So I'm Lauren Saul, I'm the Vice Chair of Computer Science and Engineering, and I'm standing in for Rajesh Gupta, who is away on travel, but wishes he could be here. We had a, a great year in, in computer science. We recruited seven new faculty, and I really want to thank the Dean's Office for the support on so many fronts uh, to turn these positions into reality. So is Nuno here? Um, can you please stand up? Nuno got his PhD from UCSD. Uh, and has been winning accolades ever since. In 2006, as a graduate student, he won the Young Investigator Award of the Human Protein Organization for his work on snake venom protein. Uh, in 2011 and 2012, he was recognized as an emerging young investigator by the journals of genome technology and molecular biosystems. He was a Sloan Research Fellow in 2013. Uh, he is the executive director of NIH Center of Computational Mass Spectrometry where his work has made UCSD the largest source of public proteomics data in the world. So we're, we're thrilled to have him here. Uh, next one, um, Daniel Kane, are you here? Okay, welcome Daniel. Uh, so joint position uh, in computer science and mathematics. So as a undergraduate at MIT, uh, Daniel distinguished him himself as a four-time winner of the Putnam Mathematical Competition. He is one of only eight undergraduates to do this in the 75-year history of the competition. To put that into some perspective, if you've heard of the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman, he won the award once. Um, Daniel went on to get his PhD in mathematics from Stanford and to do postdoctoral fellowship at, I'm sorry, PhD at Harvard and a postdoctoral fellowship at Stanford. Although he trained as a mathematician, he branched out quickly into the field of theoretical computer science. Um, he has an astounding record of 55 publications that predate his appointment as a faculty. Uh, he's known as a champion problem solver um, who works extensively also for our nation's spy services. So we're, we're grateful to have him here and on our side. Um, so uh, Julian, are you here? Stand up. Welcome, Julian. Julian received his PhD from Australian National University. He did a postdoctoral fellowship at Stanford. He works in the areas of machine learning and data mining with a special interest in social networks. Big data is everyone's favorite buzzword nowadays. Um, Julian made a name for himself uh, by mining a data set of 35 million customer re reviews on Amazon, um, and there were no published studies on data sets even close to this size before he came along. Uh, his study went on to win a grand prize in the Yelp dataset challenge. He's also studied how user opinions and preferences evolve over time. So how uh, this graph here shows how amateur beer drinkers turn into beer connoisseurs. And um, <laughs> his work has been featured extensively in the popular press with write-ups in Time, Forbes, Wired, Wired, many other outlets. So um, welcome Julian, Mia, is Mia here? Okay, so I can't see too well, so thank you. So uh, welcome Mia to our faculty as a lecturer. She received her PhD from MIT. Her research interests lie at the intersection of mathematical logic and theoretical computer science. After a postdoctoral fellowship at MIT, she accepted a three-year teaching position in the math department at UCSD. And during that time, uh, she uh, amassed a record as an astoundingly effective and popular teacher um, with uh, just sky-high approval ratings across a tremendous variety of subjects, um, discrete math, combinatorics, graph theory, logic, algebra, calculus, differential equations. I'm probably missing some others. It seemed like she was teaching uh, the whole, whole curriculum. Uh, most of these are among the largest required courses, the hardest ones to teach, and she just makes it look incredibly easy. She's also the co-organizer of one of our department's summer program for incoming students that helps uh, the students most get risk of failing to, to catch them up before they start our program. So we're very fortunate to have her with us. 
I don't think George is here tonight, but I'll say a little bit about him. He received his uh, PhD from Berkeley, worked briefly at Sun before taking a postdoctoral fellowship at UCSD, which went so well that we kept him on as a research scientist. He works in large-scale network systems and vast data centers, the sort that are used by Google, Facebook, Yahoo. Um, my favorite story about George is that in 2009, 2009 a team of Yahoo engineers uh, set the, the world record for sorting 100 terabytes of data. They did it using 3,500 machines in about three hours. And two years later, George and his students at UCSD beat this record by 50%, and they did it using just 50 machines. So they beat the record using two orders of magnitude fewer machines. It's my best David versus Goliath story in, in the field of CS. He's also associate director of the Center for Network Systems at, at UCSD. We have not one porter, but two porters. Uh, so Leo, could you stand up? Uh, so Leo received his PhD uh, from UCSD, and then this is a sweet homecoming since he's, he's coming back. Um, his passion for teaching was always apparent even as a graduate student. Uh, he actually served in, as the TA in 17 courses here despite having a full fellowship uh, just because he loved teaching so much. He was elected as a summer graduate teaching fellow in computer architecture where he received the, as a grad student the student comment that he's the best CSE professor at UCSD hands down. Um, so after receiving his PhD, he joined the faculty of Skidmore College, where he had a 98% instructor approval rating. He's an expert in peer instruction. Uh, he won the best paper award at this year's flagship conference in computer science education. So we're just uh, thrilled to have him back on our, on our faculty as a lecturer. And last, but certainly not least, I want to welcome Ravi Ramamurthy. I saw him, Ravi, thank you. So, Avi received his undergraduate degree from Caltech and his PhD from Stanford. He was on the faculty of Columbia and Berkeley before he joined UC San Diego. Uh, he's an expert in the areas of computer graphics and vision. Um, you have all probably seen the fruits of his work without realizing it if you've ever played on an Xbox uh, or you've seen the movie Avatar or you've heard of a company called Pixar. His contributions are, in, are, in, um, are just appear everywhere. Uh, he has so many accolades, I'm going to miss a few, but he won the ACM SIGGRAPH New Researcher Award, a Sloan Fellowship, an NSF Career Award, an ONR Young Investigator Award, a Presidential Early Career Award, and an Okabo Foundation Grant. So he's going to um, reboot our graphics program. So that's for Ravi. And I, I guess I'm the last. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I think we got some upward momentum going here. All right, so uh, guys like me are saying, damn, I thought I accomplished something in my life until I saw these characters in it. So sort of like, you've done it already in one third the time that I did. So uh, hey, you set the bar high, we're happy about that. So uh, just a very short closing remarks. Uh, good, the remote control put that back up. Good. Um, which is uh, uh, for, uh, there is a set of uh, Jacob School polo shirts on a table outside. Uh, your name will be on the bag. Don't worry, each has been wrapped hygienically in, in uh, plastic. Uh, but, uh, and if you don't like your size, we can trade it for you. But basically, uh, hey, you know, wear it in pride. You've all got a shirt waiting for you outside. And without any other uh, comments, let me just say thank you very, very much for everyone uh, attending. Uh, you can tell we're really proud of uh, the new bumper crop of uh, uh, faculty we have just recruited. We're going to keep the momentum going. Uh, and I invite all of you to uh, reconvene outside where we can enjoy some hors d'oeuvres and refreshments. Okay, so thank you very, very much. Appreciate seeing you. <laughs>